Hello and welcome into the Sporting Jacks Report along with Mauricio Ruiz. I'm Cole Pemper. We are getting into the meat of the early portion of the USL Championship schedule. We're going to dig into some big moments in the week. We also have some kudos to give out to a local soccer star representing the United States. But let's get right into it here and remind you to become a member of Sporting Jacks. Just go to SportingJacks.com. Membership is absolutely free. You get discounts on Sporting Jacks merchandise, invitations to exclusive insider events, automatic entry into competitions, and a chance to win special prizes and experiences. And you receive the Sporting Jacks monthly email newsletter. Plus, while you're there, you can put down your deposit for seats and tickets and receive first access to seats and a special limited edition Sporting Jacks founding member pin. Just go to SportingJacks.com. Well, Mauricio, as we said, uh, this is a really the first busy time of the season. You've got U.S. Open Cup and you've got league fixtures overlapping. And we're really starting to see the personalities of some of these squads come to the front. Well, you imagine when you come into preseason, it's really about getting to know your team, who you have, who you don't have. Now you're about you know six, seven weeks into the season. Now you have to handle an another part of it. It's the overload. And the players that you've used a lot, you've built with, but now injuries start kind of creeping up a little bit. Travel is significant. And then you have now this accumulation of, of, of matches, whether U.S. Open Cup, which is mid-season, you know, midweek games. They, they take a toll. Well, the good news is that you have a long way to go still to the end of the season. So if you haven't caught on fire yet, you still have time. The bad news is there's a long season to go. Yeah. So there's a bigger load kind of going. But we'll love to see how these teams manage your, the U.S. Open Cup roster, which is always interesting. Really enjoying this early portion of the schedule. Let's take a look at this past week's results around the USL Championship. Uh, and we had some teams doing some things they hadn't done all year long in a positive way and a couple in a negative way. But we, we did have uh, some performances I think that are worthy of pointing out this week around the league well for first win of the season and we talked about Pittsburgh has really started slow based on how they finished last year so they finally get their first win of the season uh, and then they uh, then Rhode Island and Vegas get their first win of their franchise which is huge and then I just want to keep pointing out Detroit City mm -hmm. FC Right, they're, they're, they're on top of the league, uh, and they just keep winning. They just keep doing something that I don't think anyone really expected them. All right, let's take a look at the standings, starting with the Eastern Conference. Right now, you've got a, a Charleston team on top in the East. They are unbeaten. Detroit City unbeaten. Tampa Bay Rowdies were unbeaten, and um, they fell from the ranks of the unbeatens here this week. But there are teams at the top here that are really playing well. Obviously, Louisville City continues to be somebody to, to watch. But this is really an intriguing title race here starting to shape up early on. Well, that's when you start seeing the separation, right? A couple weeks ago, you saw everyone's within two to three to four points away. Now teams start actually separating themselves. You look at Battery, unbelievable start of the season. But Louisville City and Detroit City are right there with them. Can those three teams continue to separate themselves and really make it a race at the top? In the West, just one remaining unbeaten team, and that is Sacramento Republic. We expected them to be on top. New Mexico United, talk about a team that has provided some great thrilling moments and they're right now in third with a game in hand oh and we'll watch them in our game of the week they're a team that can really score goals they can get forward but they're missing a little bit of that structure defensively but monterey bay just another team that we really weren't expecting to kind of be there to have monterey bay and new mexico united on top of the league right now in the west i really don't think anyone had that on, on, on the radar all right let's get to our match of the week and it was north carolina fc hosting new mexico united and Mauricio didn't take long, just 16 minutes in, to see uh, North Carolina find the net. Really, and, and you see in the Carolina with a really good defensive structure here. Colin Martin, a veteran in the league, kind of playing a really good ball forward to, to Julian Placius. Young player from the Alley Galaxy um, Academy comes in and gets one of, the, one of the first goals of the season. Beautiful little hesitation move there to lead to uh, the goal. Moments later, great buildup. Uh, Oh, he has, we're going to take another look at it. Watch his hesitation move right there, left the defender on the ground. Yeah, and just really bad, unfortunate, you know, slip, slip of the play from the defender. And again, a really nice build up here, and this would lead to a penalty. Right, and I'm not really sure what Pac was doing here, and his veteran player from Miami, captain for, for, for North Carolina as they moved from League One to, to the championship, and just really grabbed the player and brought him down and gave an easy uh, sc sc scoring opportunity for Greg Hurst. And he put it away to make it a 1 1 ball game. That was in the 19th minute. Well, you're going to see here the little skip, you know, that's kind of killing goalkeepers right now. I just want to show that view from behind. Here we go then. Uh, 28th minute, Rafael Mensingen shakes free and then watch the cross to Ezra Armstrong. After getting a little bit of space, cuts it back. 
Heads it down and in to give the home team a 2-1 edge. Right, and you're going to see that on the replay here. Just beautiful technique from Armstrong, really heading it down. But what a wonderful play from, you know, from the winger, you know, Rafa here. He's, I mean, at one point, there are three New Mexico players that kind of came around his side, and that's where the space gets created inside, and Armstrong comes in in the PK spot, and just really good technique. But New Mexico United would answer a minute later. Arturo Astorga finding Greg Hurst. Nice little bit of skill here by Hurst to tie it at two. Well, you see there, John Bradford not happy. Just way too much time for, for Astorga to, you know, to find, find a play. Not really know what the goalkeeper is doing. He, the ball's going away from the goal, but not taking anything away from, uh, from Greg Hurst. No more goals uh, in the game through the rest of the first half. Second half, a couple of opportunities for New Me or rather for the home team North Carolina FC. Yeah, and North, and North Carolina has really, you know, create, created a lot of chances in front of their home crowd. Um, it really could have gone up, but at the very end of the game, uh, you leave a team like New Mexico with an opportunity to score and that's exactly what they do. Yep, Dominic Hernandez to Sergio Rivas right as regulation time ended and stoppage time began. There was 4 minutes of stoppage time. That of course got added on after the goal celebration. Take another look here though. Again, very well executed on the attack by New Mexico United. Yeah, really, uh, Cole, two really good teams. Um, created a lot of good opportunity, really good football, football entertaining to watch. Uh, but if you don't defend well, if you don't recover into those dangerous, dangerous zones, which is really on top of the box, and if everyone gets attracted to the ball and you get those, those little easy cutbacks, opportunities are going to be there for you. All right, so that is the league fixture, our match of the week. But there is a lot to talk about looking ahead now after the second round of the U.S. Open Cup. We get into the round of 32 and uh, there are 20 USL championship teams yeah. remaining, eight of which did not play in the previous round. Now they're coming in here. Uh, there will be six matches between USL championship teams facing one another. One against the USL one team. Charleston Battery will face South Georgia Tormenta. Six matchups between USL championship and MLS sides that are yeah. coming in here. And um, as we mentioned, there's been a lot made of how the MLS teams are managing the U.S. Open Cup, uh, many, most of them, not entering in the tournament this year. Any of these matchups uh, that involve USL championship teams against MLS squads really catch your eye? Well, I've always talked about, you know, having a home, the home field advantage helps you quite a bit. We have New Mexico that's hosting. We also have Vegas that's hosting. They have that kind of a little bit of awkward um, stadium because it's a, it's a, it's a baseball ground has been converted into a soccer stadium. How the MLS teams arrive and really take that game in a, in a professional you know, f format. Um, I think those two teams have an opportunity to really surprise people. I really think that every MLS team, every top tier team as, enter, as they enter the, the stage in the competition should be traveling. I think that's pretty commonplace, you know, in Europe. Uh, and eventually, as they go forward, they get to host. So we'll love to see the MLS teams, all of them traveling to, to championship teams. Um, but those kind of local battles, you look at kind of Monterey and Oakland playing San Jose, uh, regardless of the outcome of it, that's really what you want. You want to kind of congest the areas of, in soccer around the country. So then you make those really local rivals between, you know, Tier 1, Tier 2, and, and Tier 3. Yeah, I would, again, only two USL championship teams will play home matches against MLS sides here in the round of 32. We'll be following that as those matches come up in early May. We want to remind you to follow us with The Sporting Pod, our weekly podcast. In the latest episode, Mauricio, Tony Allegretti, and I discuss the U.S. Open Cup, stadium news around the USL, and Rexham's second straight season of promotion. We'll answer your questions or comments as well. You can send them to us at thesportingpod at sportingjacks.com, and you can find The Sporting Pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and Amazon Music. We leave you now. Well, let's not leave you just yet. Let's first say congratulations to the U.S. Uh, youth National Team, the U16 girls who beat Paraguay 4-2. to two. You see them there. They won in PKs to win the UEFA Friendship Tournament in Turkey. One of the stars of the team is St. John's Country Day's Sydney Schmidt, number two right there. So congratulations to those young ladies. What experience for Sydney to be a part of that team. Right. I mean, to take a girl from here, from, from the Jacksonville, from, from the North Florida area, and be in Europe representing our, our country, um, hopefully that gives a lot of energy to the other young, young ladies and young boys in, in this region. But what an experience for her to travel the world representing um, you know, her country, but doing what she loves to do. No doubt. Uh, that will be some memories that will last a lifetime. Now we'll leave you with our goal of the week. We go to Tulsa, where the Charleston Battery won 4-1, to one, including this long ranger from Juan Torres. Charleston remains undefeated and atop the Eastern Conference. For Mauricio Ruiz, I'm Cole Pepper. Thanks for watching the Sporting Jacks Report. You don't see that very often. Take a bow, Juan Torres. That is an unbelievable goal, and it means we have a score of FC Tulsa nil.
Charleston Battery 2.